Hi, my name is Austin Lutz. I'm an automotive instructor here at Dunwoody College of Technology. And today we're going to be learning about digital and analog signals. Um, what we have on the board here is a couple of analog signals that we're going to talk about. Um, they're going to end up being the same, but they can look very differently when viewed on, an, on a scope. Um, for the purposes of automotive, we're looking at the signals that you'd get from what's called a signaling device. We're going to discuss more about those different types of signaling devices in our next video, but this one's going to talk about the signals that those devices produce. The first being analogs, analog signals. So analog signals here are an AC voltage signal that can vary infinitely in voltage. And by infinitely means we can look at any point on this, on this line and we can get that voltage. So we can pick a million points on this. It can vary all over the board. This can be raised, lowered, whichever way we want to. We can get any type of voltage out of this signal that we want. Also, the signal can be either positive or negative. That's why it's an AC, because it's alternating current. Okay? The two main characteristics of these types of signals is one, frequency as measured in hertz. And when we're looking at frequency, the types of things that we're looking at is how often we see a full wave. So starting, say, at this point here and ending at this point is a full wave, or that's one cycle. Okay? On this drawing, we'd be starting at roughly this point and ending at about this point. So we're looking at one full cycle of any given wave. That tells us how often we're seeing that per second. And that's what a hertz signal is. You can use your DMM to measure this hertz signal to see if there's any output from this type of a sensor. The second type of characteristic is the amplitude as measured in AC volts. The overall amplitude of any signal is measured from the lowest to its highest. So we're measuring the amount of voltage difference from the lowest up to the highest. And we're getting that in volts AC. If we set our meter on DC, that's going to average those two numbers and it's going to give us a baseline zero. That's why we have to make sure that our DMMs are set on AC voltage when we take this measurement. Digital signals are the next type of signal we're going to talk about. Digital signals are a DC voltage that vary between two different voltage levels or values. So in this case, what we're, val what we're varying between is this baseline, which maybe is one volt, up to the top, which is maybe six volts. Okay? So there'd be a range in between these. All of these are going to have that same identical range. The lines connecting them are only drawn by a scope because they're jumping from point to point. They're actually not there. Okay? So it's important to understand that this is either on or off, which is what it makes a digital signal. The signal can either be negative or positive. I drew this as a, po as a positive graph because any time if you're looking at a signal, you can flip your leads around and it would just make it positive or negative depending on how you have your leads. In general, the computer system that's getting the signal doesn't really recognize it as mattering that much. The two main characteristics of a digital signal are the frequency as measured in hertz, same as an analog signal. So we're looking at things from when they start at this point to when they would go back to zero at this point. Okay. That's then measured in hertz. The second is duration as measured in, in generally milliseconds of on and off time. So the duration would be measured from say this point to this point or from here to the end of this. This would be on time and this would be off time. There are more elaborate ways of looking at these measurements as we start to talk about on and off time. We're not going to cover that in this, in this section. You're going to have to wait for a future video series to talk about that as it's not really applicable to the ignition systems that we're learning about at this time. Thanks for watching this video on in analog and digital signals. We're going to further explore the the components that create these analog and digital signals in the next video titled Hall Effect Sensors and Pickup Coils. Again, my name is Austin Lutz. Thanks for watching.